What are your wedding memories worth to you? From your engagement party to your bachelorette and your bridal shower to your rehearsal dinner, there's a lot going on and all the people that you adore are coming together to celebrate you and your fiancé at a time and place that will never be repeated again. As in, this combination of your family and friends will never be this young again and never share these exact moments again. We're all trying our best to savour these moments so we can enjoy richer memories down the track, right? And so one of the most frequently asked questions that I hear is how can I easily and securely collect and save the photos that my guests take in the lead up and on my wedding day? Up until the last year or so, most of the solutions meant that your fam and friends had to download a new app, navigate it, sign up and register, and then learn how to either shoot and share or upload photos, all while most of them are, let's just say, festively tipsy. I mean, you've seen your auntie try to work her phone sober, right? Some people use Facebook groups, but then others won't go near Facebook. Others will use Dropbox and then realise too late that they've run out of storage. And please rest assured that hashtags are dead as well. So when I heard that serial overachiever Travis Cornish had solved this predicament for you, I knew I had to get him to explain it to you himself. In this episode, Travis will teach you the simplest way to get your wedding guests to share their photos and videos with you so you can easily download them and then do whatever you want with them. Plus, how you can get as many of your guests as possible to participate and be motivated to actually do it. Because, just in case you didn't know, getting wedding guests to share their photos and videos in the past has been like pulling teeth. Well, no more. Let's get stuck into it. Unbridly is a community of pro wedding vendors who believe in freedom and integrity in weddings, giving you options, solutions, tips and tricks to create the experience and memories that you and your fiancé really want and deserve. Because we believe that weddings are a team sport. With how-tos, stories and interviews with recently married couples, we find out what went right and what they'd change if they could go back and do it all over again. I'm Camille and welcome to the Unbridly podcast. Hi, Travis. Thank you so much for making the time because I know you never sit still for long. (laughs) Really appreciate you coming on and having a chat. No worries. So thanks for having me. Great to be on the podcast. Great to be here. Because on top of, in fact, no, I'm not going to explain it. You tell the listener all the things that you do. Okay. Oh, gosh. You don't have that much time. Um, Quickly, by trade, I'm a hairdresser. So, you know, during the week, I'm at my salon up here in Blackwood and doing some cool hair. On weekends for the last sort of nine years, been doing wedding photography. So I have a, you know, a firm grasp on the wedding photography side of Third of things, we had a great team now, which is cool. So we do a lot of weddings, which is great, which obviously led me into the, the e-commerce space with Never Miss Moments and offering sort of online galleries to not just weddings, but events and those sort of things. So effectively, I have three jobs, I guess, or three three companies, and um, it just involves getting up early and, uh, and staying back late to get it all done. Yeah, bit, bit of a lazy yeah. sort. I get it. <laughs> um, so I, I imagine, I mean, you tell me, Travis, but... I thought that you might have seen the missing link, like the hole in the market, which brought on never miss moments. What was your aha moment there? Yeah. You know, I saw the QR code thing at a wedding a few years ago. I'm not sure who was doing it at the time. It was on the back of this um, plastic cellophane wrapper of a, of a cookie. What? And it had sort of like, yeah, and with the moisture of the cookie, it just like, yeah. And it was hard to see and hard to whatever, but. Of course, it's always room for improvement. I think weddings are a, a huge industry, especially globally. So seeing that a lot of people um, have Polaroid cameras and disposable cameras and all those sort of things at their wedding, there's, it begs the question, I guess, how do we capture more memories and more moments? And often, very often, especially as a wedding photographer, you see so many people on their phones taking candid photos, even just selfies of them and their partner the reception or before the ceremony starts and all these sort of things. And so the way to capture that is, is obviously online and giving people the ability 
and the simplicity to share those images and videos with the couple rather than texting it to them later and, and having the couple have to follow up, you know, like a hundred guests, right? And just you text everyone and uh, it's just a nightmare. So we just simplified that for a very affordable price. Then market research came in and, you know, who, who's in the space and what are they doing and how can we do it better and all those sort of things come up from there, yeah. It's really smart because I hear from couples all the time, they're going, you know, I've got this great photographer. They're really stoked. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got this great videographer. Okay, awesome. Locked him in. But they're also very aware that you guys take Uh, fucking time to edit your stuff afterwards. Like there's, (laughs) you know, well, there's there's weeks, isn't there, in between you actually being physically there on a wedding day and them getting able to see the beautiful images that you create. And so there's, yeah, there's this vacuum where the thing happened, but they have no evidence that it happened and then they get the beautiful stuff. So like, (laughs) yeah, you're helping them. Correct. We're bridging that gap. And something that we wanted to do in the wedding photography space is we'll always give teasers the next day because that was a gap that exactly as you said, you know, some wedding photographers take um, two or three months and video is more like four months or so, you know, and that's industry standard and that's fine. There's a lot that goes into video. Um, but we always make sure that the next day our couples get some professional photos mm-hmm. back. But if you've got uh, Polaroids or disposable cameras or like an online gallery set up at the wedding or like a photo booth, for instance, something like that, all those different tools are there to give you that instant gratification, that instant report on everyone having such a great time. Like photo booths are a great example when you get all those printouts and people put them in the album book and you can flip through and people wearing funny hats and the glasses and, you know, all those sort of things. And they're great. But, you know, it's probably one of the most expensive days I would assume in, in any couple's life together. And so the more angles and the more opportunity you have to capture memories and moments, the less it gets forgotten over time. And you might not look at them you know, all the time, but every now and then, maybe on your anniversary or something, you're just like, oh, a little flick through and, and it's just really nice. Yeah. So it's just an, another opportunity to, to do that and to do it, you know, quickly, simply and affordably, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's funny, like, you know, you mentioning the things like photo booths and um, Polaroids and things like that. They have their place. They absolutely have their place because it's a form of entertainment for yeah. you know, a couple's guests as well. You know, they're running yeah, around doing absolutely. shit. I think, you know, I think great. they're great. Um, yeah. But it's, I mean, it, that also discounts the fact that pretty much, you know, maybe except for your great aunt Doreen, everyone else has a fucking smartphone in their hand. Correct. And they're taking the photos anyway. So being able to, yeah, siphon that into your memories. Yeah. Capitalize on it. Yeah. Really smart. Yeah, if you've got like 100 guests at your wedding and they all take like 10 photos, there's like a 1,000 more photos of your night that you can just go through. And some people say, you know, oh, why don't you just have a hashtag or something? And number one, not everyone's going to post all those photos to their social media and remember to use your hashtag. And, and number two, if they do post it on there and so forth, Instagram, I believe, is still very hard for it. Like you, you'd still have to message them and say, hey, I like that photo that you put, unless you screenshotted it. But it's not like you can just download that that photo simply, right? So the hashtag thing is, in my opinion, one of the worst worst versions of it because you see these photos, be yeah. like, I don't have a copy of this, you know, like I, I want these all here, you know. So and an online gallery does that where it triples a hundred people into one online space, and then you just you know control all and push download, then it just goes into the laptop or your iPhone or whatever device. I love it so much, Travis. Um, so. You know, like you mentioned, you touched on, there are a few different options out there, a few different, you know, apps, platforms that are used worldwide for this. And I've seen some poor, like, brides-to-be in um, Facebook groups going, oh, should I use Dropbox? Should I use Google Drive? And I I get where they're coming from because, you know, it's a low-tech way. You know, it might be a little bit less scary than having an application or platform like yours. But maybe you can take away the fear, the tech fear, which is very real. And just if you could tell my listener, you know, if they're a person at a wedding, they sit down and they see the QR code from Never Miss Moments, like tell them how easy it is. It is as simple as scanning the QR code, which will bring you to the upload page of that couple. And it says, you know, John and Mary's wedding. And there's two options on that screen. It's the only options you'll see. One is upload, and that'll bring you 
to the options of, you know, do you want to bring the camera out or go to camera roll where you've taken photos throughout the day? So you don't need to use the camera right then and there. You can have a pile of 20 photos from the day and just, you know, click them in and upload. The other button is, is view gallery and um, that'll allow you to go into the photos that have already been uploaded and just to have a little scroll through to have a little look if you want to. The customer of ours or like the bride and groom, they do have the option or functionality to turn that on or off to allow their guests to or to not. From a lot of feedback that we've had over the last year, you'd be surprised probably 30% of people would rather yeah. have that, keep that private. Some of them, you know, you have to download an app or you have to uh, sign up and enter your name and email, all these barriers to entry, I would call them. And um, I think there is some very good platforms like ours out there that have adopted that simplicity factor like we have, which is basically scan the code and bang, you're right there, push upload, choose your photos, hit upload, and that's it. it yes. There's no registrations, no apps, there's no barriers. You want to do it quickly and promptly and you know you're at a wedding you don't sit on your phone all night no one wants everyone on their phones but if you can just quickly do that you know then it's then it's great the one other thing that we do um offer as well when the customers of ours are setting it up there's the qr code of course which is unique to their gallery to download but under that there is like the digital link which is the same thing as where the qr code would send people so for instance other very rare occurrences where you're rural and like really far away there's no phone reception. The place doesn't have Wi-Fi. Like no one can physically, you can't use this. But that link that we provide, you would just text that out to everyone or Messenger or whatever you want. Like usually people got a little Facebook group like, hey guys, um, there was no reception on the weekend, but if you can, um, here's the link, click that. And that literally takes them to the same place. So in the comfort of all the guests' homes with their own Wi-Fi and reception and stuff, you can just upload after the event as well. The gallery of ours anyway is, is open for, for a full year. So it's not dedicated to a certain date or hour period where you've got 24 hours to upload, otherwise you miss the boat. So, I mean, that would be really great then, Travis, for, you know, if you're having pre-wedding events, you know, especially for those in the States, they're doing all sorts of pre-wedding events. They've got, you know, this parent, this parent, they've got the rehearsal dinner. They've got bucks and stags and um, hens and bachelorettes and all that sort of stuff. So you could have that link in that QR code, couldn't you? You could, yeah. And a lot of people like to separate it. So they might buy a couple of galleries and they'll have one for like the hens and bucks or like pre-wedding stuff. Um, and then they'll have one just for the for the wedding day. But regardless, it, it all goes into that same gallery. So you could have, you know, the, the pre-wedding stuff a week earlier, you know, and, and gather some photos from that into that gallery that on the wedding night you have the same qr code and um, it just adds more photos to that gallery it's that simple we sort of looked at any barriers and, and questions and stuff and we just removed all the clutter and the crap and we just really tried to simplify it as best we can like the oldies are sitting there god love them the boomers are sitting there going oh i don't want to download that app because you know yeah it takes time <laughs> it's shit no one wants to do that Fuck that. If they don't have Gmail, they don't want to sign up to Google and, you know, they don't want to pay for storage on Dropbox yeah, or whatever the case exactly. may be. Some people would say, you know, why don't you just create like a WhatsApp group or something? And that, that means that everyone there has to have WhatsApp and then you have to create a group and then you have to invite everyone to that group and then you have to remind everyone in that group to send you all the images to that group. And then in that group, you've got like a hundred people commenting, talking, whatever. There's some photos coming. You might get the same amount of photos, but then you have to scroll all the way to the top and then you have to download them individually. Like it's a shit show. It's just, it's just more difficult. The other fears that I hear from couples, especially with online galleries, is if there is an ex who's, I don't know, bit attached still, bit nosy, might want to find out what's happening at this wedding. Um, if there's a side of the family that they don't want to see certain stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, what's what's the deal with privacy there? Yeah, love that. We take privacy very, very seriously. And I've spent thousands of dollars on lawyers and, and opinions from people as well. And there's something especially in, in Europe and, and UK called the GDPR. And that's like the gold standard of privacy, you know. Um, so for us, the main thing when you're setting up your gallery is just a toggle on and off button that's like set password on off. And that password, if you just set it on, no one can view the gallery that way without the password. So you could keep that on and, and send it to the family that you like, uh, interstate yeah. or overseas, to check out your wedding, right? It's very, very simple. And that's why I put that privacy in there. You're always in control of your gallery for sure. 
And then the other thing, of course, because you being a wedding photographer, mm. Travis, as well, you'd be like all across, you know, the idea of copyright, you know, the idea of the person who presses the shutter being the owner of the photos, you know, how does that work with a hundred odd people there yeah. basically handing over their photos to you as the yeah. couple who just got yeah. married? And that comes down to privacy as well. And in our privacy, um, you know, documents and stuff on the website, we do go into that. And it's basically, you know, by using the service, you're agreeing that you're sharing um, what you've decided to share to the couple. Never this moment doesn't have any interest in going through galleries or looking at anything or using any image from anything for any promotional reasons. We work that out ourselves. And if we were going to use something, we would ask, but we had like 25,000 photos uploaded over the weekend. Wow. We're just not, we're just, we're just not going to go through <laughs> that. time for that. Because it's a big fear, isn't it, like Trav, with, um, you know, the likes of TikTok and stuff, right? With the idea that you create something, you put it up there yeah. and China's stealing your IP. Yeah, true. Just, you know, you can just, just don't invite China to your wedding. That's probably like okay. number one. Failing that, we have had where someone's gone, hey, I uploaded this like quite personal photo and we've had everything from like and through the documents as far as like you know driver's license numbers and stuff um we have obviously the odd dick pic that that comes up as well we've even had someone like upload some photos that were just from like a full-blown surgery like it was hectic they sent us this this message and so we've uploaded these ones like we need them deleted and stuff like all oh, right and like we have the ability to do that but it's not my place to do that right so, you know, our reply is, of course, please reach out to the, the couple. Um, they have the ability to delete photos. And as a guest, you can't delete any photos. It's not your place to be able to delete the photos because some drunk person accidentally pushes your button, delete all the whole things. But, oh. So that that's, yeah. I, I didn't go there. Yeah. So if you had that permission enabled for anyone viewing the gallery to have the opportunity to to do that, That'd be a problem. One of our other privacy settings as well, which is another toggle on and off, is like allow people to download or not. So you could just turn that off as well. It doesn't stop people screenshotting stuff, but you know, it's another level there where, you know, um, as a guest, you can only view this gallery, you can't download anything. But yeah, if the gallery is, you know, allows downloads and there's no password put on, any guest can go in and have a look and download it, which is cool because, you know, all your friends might want to go in there and, and they want yeah. to download friends' photos and stuff like that. Or, you know, your friend took a nice photo of, you know, you and your partner and they put it on the thing and on the gallery and, and you and you want it. But, yeah, we have had times where there's inappropriate photos, whether it be nudity or personal information yeah. or uh, a surgery, for God's sakes. Um, but it's basically, yeah, con contact the couple and they'll delete it. And we'll probably forward that email to the couple as oh, well. Nice. If we know who it is, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll make them aware and they can they can promptly uh, get rid of get rid of that. But it's the couple's choice it comes down to, Travis, yeah? Yeah, always. And that's that's what they're paying for. It's your choice to allow your guests to download or not. It's your choice to put a password on so your guests yeah. can either view the gallery or not. You know, some people integrate it into like a wedding website. You know, they just um, copy the link and put it as a hot link and, and then everyone can have a look at it, obviously, after the fact as well and, and read it the day a little bit. You still haven't written your vows yet, have you? Let me help. In around 20 minutes or so, you can easily write personalised wedding vows unlike anything you've heard before that will make your fiancé feel like the most loved, understood and appreciated person on the planet. The how to write wedding vows that don't suck. <laughs> Instant download. 17-page PDF ebook walks you through a step-by-step -step format for your vows, how to find the right words and phrases to describe your feelings and your fiancé, how to write that crucial first draft and create your final wedding vows masterpiece. So if you don't know how or even where to start, if you've been Googling your little heart out, or if you've been calling them wedding vows, A-E-I-O-U, this ebook is for you. Included in there are also some bonus secrets for getting the most out of your wedding ceremony. So make sure you download your copy right now and get Write Your Wedding Vows crossed off your to-do list today. The link is in the show notes. 
So like you mentioned, there's a few other sharing apps or platforms that are available. How does Never Miss Moments compare with something like Web Uploader or Guest Picks? There's some really good brands out there and it's almost like the Pepsi and the Coca-Cola mix to a degree. And it comes down to offerings as well, like the simplicity behind it. And um, Guest Picks, for instance, are very good. And I think that they do a very good job. And I'm, I'm not going to sit here and talk anyone else down. I think it comes down to, you know, what we offer and the price tier structure and stuff. I know that Guest Picks have a tiered pricing thing if it's a smaller event. Or a bigger event, it, it changes on the price. Ours, we sort of meet in the middle, and, and we just have sort of one gallery to buy where where we just say, look, unlimited users, unlimited uploads. You know, it's live for one year, and those sort of things. So the intricacies come down to the amount of users, the amount of photos being uploaded, and how long the mm-hmm. gallery is live for. You know, so it's important to read those those small bits of information. I can't remember the website, but one of them is, you know, it's live for 30 days and you can, um, you have to select the date that people are allowed to upload from. So it's, yeah. Yeah, if you miss that 30 day window or if someone wanted to upload stuff the day after, but yeah, if you miss the day and you miss it, and yeah. again, that comes down to those restrictions and restrictions and restrictions. So yeah, it's hard to compare, but there's little things in there that are certainly comparable where it be time or amount of, photos uploaded or users and, and, yeah. and stuff like that. Well, because when I went in and I compared what you guys offered versus the likes of Wed Uploader or Guest Picks, yeah, it was the number of guests that were sort of allowed access to that web link or the QR code, however you present it. And I thought, yeah. geez, that's interesting. And then it looked to me on a really quick whip around the world that no one else was offering a year. <laughs> Of having the gallery live. Correct. Yeah. And that's a big one because people underestimate the cost of servers and, and hosting and to host all that data. As I said, we had about 25,000 images and videos uploaded over the weekend, you know, and the few times about 52 weeks, yes, a lot of images to be hosted on a server for that amount of time. But at the end of the day, as well, as I was telling my developer just last week, right, the profit side of it comes secondary to our product offering and to our service delivery. It's, it's very important that we differentiate ourselves as best we can. And if we have to take a hit on the, the high end side of things, then, then fair enough and, and so be it. But you know, we want to make sure we're offering um, as best we can and giving people that opportunity because if you have a wedding night and have everyone upload everything, then maybe you know, three weeks later you go on your honeymoon, you, know, you might want to use yeah. that gallery for your honeymoon, right? So restricting people from to uploading to, to, to one night doesn't really work in my eye, because it's not broad enough. And if you limit the amount of users, then what if you have a hen's night the two weeks before and we have those people and then you have the wedding night of those people and then, and then suddenly, you know, you hit your user limit and then you can't use the bloody things. And then half the people at your wedding can't use it. Yeah, but it suits some, but we want to suit everyone. Yeah. And we have some people that, you know, have a very small intimate thing and they have you know, 100, 200 photos uploaded. I love it because that's all it was. And it was a small thing. We have some people that have 800 photos uploaded, you know, and it's wow. a big event and they have tons of, of photos and videos and they love it. That's so good, Trav. <laughs> it means a lot to have wedding businesses that I get to chat with who just care more yeah. about what the couple gets, about their experience yeah. than, yeah, the servers out the back that are holding their yeah. photos. It's just, yeah, it's fucking great. <laughs> you, you see it in, in, in celebrants, right? You know, you know this. And, you, and especially in photographers and videographers, like I've worked with some amazing people, you know, in, in South Australia in my nine years. And more often than not, they are really fucking cool people and they are there for the couple and everything works beautifully. But there are some people out there who are just dicks and it's all about them. And you just think, mm. why are you fucking doing this? Because... We're not here for anyone else. We're here for them. Whatever this question is that's going to make their day yeah. better, the answer is yes. It always has and always will be because we're there for them. And uh, as I say with hairdressing, it's not my hair appointment. It's yours. How do I make you feel and look beautiful today, whether you be older or younger or male or female or anything in between? I don't care how you identify. Like As long as you feel great when you, you leave, it's a win in my eyes. And so we carry that through to the online gallery with, with Never Miss Moments as well. And, and that comes from feedback and making sure we're working very closely with our customer service team as well. Just, yeah. 
you know, tell me everything, like everything. You know, you report straight to me and you tell me about what we need to do because if there's something that we're not doing and we should be, let's, mm. let's entertain it and let's do it, you know. I've got a theory, Trav. Oh, yes. I reckon being a wedding supplier in any sort of category, in any field, I think the skills are 50%. Yeah. And I think not being an asshole is yeah. the other 50%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and I say this to my, my wedding guys when I bring them on as well. I literally say it's 50% personality because you can be the smartest fucking human out there knowing everything about your Sony or your Canon or your whatever camera you like to use. You can know the shit out of that, right? And you can have... 30 lenses and a backpack worth of like 60 gram worth of gear. But if you're a knob, like no one, like no one gives a single fuck. Like no one cares. Like no one likes you. Like you have 50% of it is just walking and talking like a great person because the assumption is already that you can do your job. So being able to do your job isn't, you know, you know, like you go to a petrol station and you put fuel in your car and you pay the money and you leave. I gotta brag about it. I went to a petrol station. I got fucking petrol. There was an expectation. That's what I got. You gotta remember maybe the person who served you, who was like an absolute legend. I thought that was a great experience. But the base level was I want petrol in my car and I put it in there and it did what it was meant to do. So if you hire a wedding photographer and you like, they took photos and that looked good, then that's an expectation. You're not, you're not exceeding expectations in in any way, shape, or form. And the only way to do that is to give them an amazing experience and have something memorable. That's otherwise you're just the same as every other freaking person with the bloody camera who knows how to use it. So I love it's that. very simple. I love that. Yeah. Okay. So the last little bit that I'd love to tack <laughs> on the end here, Travis, is we've all <laughs> well, we've all heard Hit me. Hit me. and seen, you know, in our work that a couple's gone to very huge, great lengths. And, you know, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, it was all about the hashtag. They had to have a smart and catchy hashtag and had to be a bit yeah. funny, a bit pithy, a um, bit punny. Um, and, you know, they had it on their signs and shit. And, you know, they would be like, oh, it's a hashtag, it's a hashtag. Yeah. And then the next day, there was mm. nothing. Donuts. Zero fucking donuts. Big circle. How? Can couples, I mean, obviously it's not the same with a QR code and with a link and stuff like that, but what are the different opportunities that couples have to really make the most out of getting as many people to upload their photos for them? Like how do they make the most of this? The worst way to do it is to, to, to print one little place card and put it on your presence table at the back of the room, you know, and hope to fuck people see. Yeah. That's the worst way. <laughs> But the best way, on the place card, you know, you want a simple instruction. You have your couple's name, you have the date, and you just say, please scan the code to share your memories with the happy couple. And that's that's a simple one, so you want to prompt. Uh, number two, I would print at least one per table. Best results are obviously a few um, or just, you know, where the menus go, you just have one there as well. So every guest gets one. You know, the difference between printing 10 to printing 50 or 100 is a matter of 20 bucks or something on this to print. It's not really a big deal so the more that you print the better that you reduce those barriers to entry for people to adopt that little thing for you and if you make it personal you were at your wedding because it's all about you so they are generally willing to help out right and even if grandma can't work it you can grab grandma's phone and take a photo of grandma for her and, and, and upload it for it's very very simple you definitely want your MC of the night when they are saying you know emergency exits are over here the toilets are on the left and there's a you know the yeah, photo booth over here and this and on your table you will see a little you know qr code please scan that tonight uh, the couple would love to see all those memories and blah, blah blah so you have that prompt and and you can have that prompt a bit later on as well maybe after speeches and stuff um you know dance floor and all those sort of things lastly the thank you card a lot of people have thank you cards that go out and um you know feel free to put that qr code on the on the thank you card uh, again if people have forgotten the good thing about once they scan the code, it, it, it brings up a new, um, you know, Safari uh, internet browser. And so, of course, when people leave the venue, they're still going to have probably that browser open. And, you know, you don't need to be in any certain vicinity to use it. So there's a few opportunities there to do it. And it comes down to just reminding people, having it easily accessible and fairly clear. Make sure the place card has a call to action, we would call it, where it just says, you know, please share your photos and videos because the most platforms these days, especially ours, support 
video so you can get a lot of little you know snippets of you know 10 20 seconds on the, the dance floor or something but that would be my top tip i reckon to to make the most of it it's uh you know it's an 80 dollar product or so very inexpensive that's got a huge yeah. impact on on someone's days and the memories that help you you know relive it and stuff and for 80 bucks it's just a no-brainer for most people which is cool and i'm guessing i love the idea of putting it on thank you cards after because those people who are drunk mm. might miss it on the night um and they go <laughs> oh yeah yeah. I meant to upload yeah, yeah. them. I didn't. Oh, great. I can do it now. That's so good, Travis. When I saw your Facebook post, I don't know, a month ago that said that you were hitting 100,000 followers mm. on Instagram, I'm like, holy shit, what's he doing he, now? Yeah. Better have a look. And then I had a look and I'm like, this is quite possibly the best solution for couples to get their friends and family's photos. Like I can't see a better solution out there. So I'm so yeah. glad you did it. I'm so glad you're customer focused. And yeah, I want all the people who are listening on here, like if they want their guest photos and why wouldn't you, quite frankly, <laughs> then yeah, then this is what you need to go for. So where can my listener find Never Miss Moments? Nevermissmoments.com uh, or of course, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, just type in a little search bar, Never Miss Moments, and everything will link you back to, to the website. It's a very quick checkout process. We send you a welcome email, you set your password, you are now in your portal, and you can adjust the settings very quickly and then just push the download QR button. And we offer free templates, which is really cool. We've got like 20 different place card templates. You don't even have to design the bloody thing. Just click the bloody Canva design that you like. Click and drag your QR code into the middle. Download it. Fucking print it. Easy. Big fan of simple. There needs to be more things about weddings that are simple. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Travis. Pleasure. I'm going to put the links actually to Never Miss Moments in the show notes of this podcast app. So, listener, you can just scroll to the bottom there, press the link. Go and get it and, yeah, sort out your guest wedding photos. Love that. Thanks so much, Travis. Thank you for having me. It's been great chatting. Thank you again. Appreciate it. Cheers, mate. Bye. See ya. That about wraps it up for this episode of the Umbradley podcast. For the links and resources we mentioned, please head to the show notes. And if you love the show, please review and subscribe on the podcast platform you're on now so you don't miss out on a single episode. Thanks so much for listening. And remember, weddings are a team sport. Catch you soon.